Hi everyone, this is Rick and I am sorry I haven't done very many videos lately. I'll correct that soon. I've been traveling so much. I'm traveling again <laughs> and I've only been home about 30 hours the last month or so in Seattle and I'm, I'm off again on the road. I just am very busy uh, lately and for those of you who have sent me books to work on, I'll get, I'll get to those uh, starting on the 18th. I'm going to stop taking a new request for people for me to work on their books because it's just getting uh, pushed out too far. I'm just not able to keep up with it. But uh, I will. I will hopefully stop traveling soon. Uh, when does this damn quarantine start? Anyway, <laughs> I've been gone so much. I think I traveled 20, 22 weeks last year during COVID. So and this year doesn't look much better. Anyway, uh, I have some Q&As this week and uh, maybe just some uh, comments too from, from you because it's mostly what I can do while I'm traveling. I'll do lots more educational stuff too once I'm, once I'm home as well as work on books. Uh, Rick, uh, Paul writes, Rick, I just discovered you, uh, your YouTube channel and have never come across anyone with your knowledge or the way you restore comics. I have only begun looking into YouTube for advice and ideas on how to clean and press comics starting last year. Good. Hey, that's cool, man. I, I'm glad you're looking into it. I, more people that do this, the better. The better it is. I, I have. I, I want to retain very little special knowledge, and I want us all to be able to, to do this work uh, safely. And I want us to all be able to not damage books. Those are my two goals. Um, there are a ton of channels to weed through, and finally discovered yours. I stopped collecting comics 1988. So uh, the other point we're missing here, Paul, is when did you start collecting comics? I would like to hear that. If you stopped in 1988, I think most of my viewers weren't even born then. Uh, after collecting heavily in the mid-80s, and have not really touched a book in almost 30 years. Dude, that is so sad. Honestly, I have been attempting to sell my entire collection as is, but discovered through YouTube that in order to get the best value is to clean, press, and slab them to the CGC. Now, that is true. It ain't easy, but it is the way to get the most money. I've been pouring through YouTube, Instagram, and the internet to become better educated on the process since it is all new to me, but I have not seen a channel like yours. Aw, thanks. Uh, this is the first channel I came across so far that has removed green marker from that floor number two to annual. Yeah, that was, I mean, honestly, that was hard. That was not easy, but I did it. Um, you mentioned that you are a chemist and have created a solution to clean comics with a makeup pad. I have heard of the basic dry cleaning, such as white eraser on white parts that the Play-Doh book cleaner, the absorbing, he means, uh, and sponge methods. And everybody does that, and they're fine, and they work, uh, except the magic eraser. I don't like to use that. Um, but never any using water-based solution. I know, right? Uh, I'm currently dumbfounded and need to study your channel some more. That's, I, get that, I get that a lot. It is dumbfounding. The, the idea of soaking your book is, uh, it's you know, and it doesn't always work. Uh, every every cleaning method is a risk. Uh, uh the absorbing is a risk. Uh, rubbing with an eraser is a risk. There are lower risks. Uh, using a water-based solution is a risk. Sometimes some very particular books don't like the cleaning solution. Uh, another book that looks just like it is fine. I, I have yet to determine what is the difference between the two. And I always test very small areas first uh, before I'll clean a book, but it's a risk. Uh, it works most of the time, but not all the time. Uh, there are just so many different methods out there. Frankly, my head is spinning. Thank you for your channel and your time. You know, thanks, Paul. That's very kind of you. It's a very kind and generous uh, note. Thanks so much. These are some photos of some Miss Marvel books that a customer is going to send me that he says, hey, uh, I want to know if I can remove the mold from them. He said, hey, I'm uh, possibly helping me remove mold from my Miss Marvel books. Wait your response. And... Looking at this, especially with the water pattern there, I'm almost certain that that is black mold. One of, you know, several different colonies of mold that we call black mold. And I'm like, I said to myself, yep, that is, that is for sure black mold and I can for sure remove it. So uh, I, that's an easy job. I'll probably take this job because I don't, I don't foresee any problem with this one. But what I'll do is I'll kill it because I'll put it in an ozone chamber and then I'll remove its bodies with, you know, a, absorbing as much as I can and then I'll put it in a vacuum chamber uh, so that the spores don't come out and and then I will remove the bodies individually so I'll take care of that for this guy 
no problemo there. That should be easy. Here's a, I got a suggestion and a question. And I love suggestions. I mean, I, lots of people know more about the stuff than I do. I have my own way of doing things, of course, and my own favorite things, but I'm always happy to get uh, suggestions and to, uh, to improve myself as well. Uh, uh, Mike right, Michael writes, hello, Rick. I've enjoyed your videos. I like your demonstrations and your more scientific approach to your hobby such slide side hustle, right? Exactly. This is, uh, I, I do have two suggestions and a question. And he writes, uh, my first suggestion is to use a scanner for before and after images. This should give you consistent lighting. These scans will complement your internal glare shots and show indentations, ticks, and overall shine. The second suggestion is to use your uh, bright white cardstock. Digital camera scanners, like our eyes and brain, calibrate to find something white in an image and balance them out. That is why I see someone do before and after images. They almost always say the camera's not really picking up the difference, but trust me, it's the cleaner. And I, I say that a lot too, and I think I've heard it. So Michael's advice is well taken. Don't currently have a scanner, so I have fixed that problem. And he's he's kind enough to say he would ship one to me. What a, a nice guy. That's a great suggestion. And if I can get past my my laziness, I'll actually introduce that idea. That's a, that's a good one. And my question, he says, and, and thank you for that, Michael. I appreciate it. And my question, do you think that putting this bookkeeper or carval spray solution into a humidity chamber would allow the solution to penetrate the comic book newsprint and change the pH level? I would think it would be left behind by a steamer, but that would be present in the humid air of a chamber. Uh, so I'm trying to think of how I test newsprint levels before and after. So let's take a look-see. Sheesh. Well, I uh, ended up recording the rest of this video, and I, uh, being an idiot, I didn't have my headphones in, so you guys couldn't hear anything. So I'm going to do some of this over again. So what was Michael talking about? I'm talking about this stuff here. I'm talking about Bookkeeper Archival Spray, which is a suspension, a colloidal suspension of magnesium oxide. And you squirt it on a book and then let it dry and neutralize acid. Does it work? Yep, it does work. Do I use it? Nope, I don't use it. Um, I don't use it, especially in newsprint. I don't like to get the interior pages like wet like that directly, especially if they're touching another page. It's a risky operation. Um, and magnesium oxide, oxide isn't my first choice for uh, you know, comic book paper, which is essentially newsprint with a lot of lignin in it. And uh, well, what is the stuff? What is magnesium oxide? As it is, um, you can buy it like as an acid neutralizing put like some pictures here. You can buy it as a supplement, by the way. You can just eat this stuff. Here it is here. And you can also use it as like a acid spill Pick up These packs of, I don't know what that is. There's a horse on that one. Um, so um, you can just buy it and then there's a spill packs of it. I'm trying to find a spill kit that has it in there. I don't really see it. But they have these big bags that you can just pour if like you spill acid to help neutralize it. And it works okay, honestly. Um, but I use, myself, I use calcium hydroxide. And um, here's why, Let's see if I can find it. So these are notes from what I wrote earlier. Uh, you missed that whole conversation, but, so magnesium oxide and, and hydrochloric acid, two hydrochloric acids makes magnesium chloride and water. And it's not a fast reaction or necessarily exothermic, but it's there. And then <clears throat> we're more interested in the sulfates because the sizing agent in comic book paper makes sulfates uh, see some of my previous videos and uh, magnesium sulfate and water happen. So this is the part we want to look at the products. Like what are we making from it? And if you look at the, these are group two elements. Magnesium and calcium <clears throat> are both the second period of the, the column of the periodic table. Magnesium has a higher uh, electronegativity. I mean, it's more polar. Therefore, it has a stronger lattice energy in kilojoules per mole. And its solubility in water is very low and solubility calcium is higher. It's mostly because magnesium is smaller and calcium is bigger and has a higher coordination complex. Uh, interestingly, it's the opposite effect for carbonates, but for sulfates, it's like that. So I use a calcium hydroxide and the sulfuric acid makes this calcium sulfate, whoops, a little plus here, and, and water. And I like it because I'm going to come back and sort of rinse the book off later. And this is more soluble than that. And so I can, I can clean it off and it won't leave a, a white residue behind. Which is why I like it. But you know what? If you if you want to use magnesium oxide, that's fine. I have no problem with it. I don't think it'll really hurt anything. It just won't look as good. Uh, and his his question was specifically two questions. One is, can I put this in, in like a humidity chamber and evaporate the stuff and let it permeate the book to help get past sort of the 
or the effort and the, uh, the the danger of getting those interior pages wet. And no, can't. It's like distilling, you know, whiskey or something. You're separating the precipitate. The salt will be left behind. Just the water comes over. And I, I think he knew that. He's just asking. He's a smart guy. Um, second question was he asked me, hey, um, how do you take the pH of paper? You can't really. They, they tell you to chop some of it up and then mix it in water and take the pH of that. Um, you can use Raman spectroscopy if you want to use the near IR to estimate pH by the you know some of the the uh, H3O uh, bonds that stick to stuff because you know H plus doesn't just live on its own it's going to hit like a water or something and you can measure those in the near IR if you're really good at it but it's a lot of work um, to do that and also the edges of books are always more um, acidic than the interior part of a book which is why you get uh, well marble chipping we'll talk about that with uh, oxidation soon um, last thing is that. Chris Stevens, who is always, he's a budding scientist. I love this guy. He's really smart. Um, he says, hey, there's a thread, another cleaning and pressing page about using H2O2, which is hydrogen peroxide and UV light. I'd love to hear your take. And he says that. So, um, And the, the guy on the other page did an awesome job. He did this great experiment. I'll just show you real quick. So he says, hey, man, I got this old comic book. I took the back page. And you know, he did some great experiments as a control over here. And he just did peroxide in the upper left-hand corner. And he did peroxide plus UV light. Look how much wider that looks. And he did peroxide with 60 watt light down here. So he says, you know, that, and he makes his disclaimers that don't do it and whatever and changing this, changing that. So, um, and he wants to know what about it? Can you do this? And yeah, of course you can do it. Uh, what's going on chemically is, and I, I don't want to talk about it for too long. I gotta go to work here in a minute. Is there's these things called chromophores. We call them universal yellow, which is a lot of these carbon-carbon double bonds, and they're they're down here. You can see my, my I've written here. Maybe I should just tell you. Um, I'll just talk about it. So the carbon-carbon double bonds are chromophores, and if they're conjugated, meaning there's a double bond, then a space, another double bond, it's even more chromophore. You get some weird color. That's how colors work, actually. Um, so um, what what the peroxide and the UV light both do is they will uh, oxidize those. So um, they'll break those bonds and open them back up again so they don't conjugate light, they don't absorb, you don't see the reflection as yellow. Now, is that good or bad? Well, it's okay if you put exactly enough stuff in and just do those bonds and nothing else. So that's okay. However, you can make your comic books brittle, especially in pages where it's been folded a lot of times. Like I've, I've personally done some experiments in which I put it on the spine of books and places where things fold and they will become very brittle. I, I use much stronger than 3% peroxide. So there's the, uh, when I do these experiments, but it'll become very brittle. So brittle you can feel it and you can definitely crack it. So crack meaning the paper, uh, it will just crack. So you have to be careful. Now 3%, it will crack just not right away. The page will just fall apart. What? Why? What's what's happening? Well, um, you know, I'm not going to draw the whole thing. I'll bore you anyway. Imagine that the paper lignin molecules are these long, skinny guys that go this way. It's these cross-linking links that go this way that really help the paper get both its flexibility and its strength. And so, those are the things we're looking at. These these links here are the ones that can get oxidized, and then those pages will those pieces those fibers will separate, and they've lost their strength and their flexibility. They'll, so meaning they'll, they'll break and crack. And will it happen right away? No, that's the, that's the crazy thing. The, the, the chromophore the oxidation is, is, is pretty quick. It's just in a few hours probably, or maybe even minutes. Um, the paper one takes a long time. So you, you don't know, it might be years, it might be 10 years, maybe a year. Uh, it's, and that's what marble, marble chipping really is this sort of oxidation to acid at the edges of things where it's more and it breaks. That's what you, when you see those comic books with the broken edges, that's what's happening. Uh, and why the edges? Well, because that's where all the gases go, you know, from the atmosphere and that's where things collect. So um, you know what? I mean, I don't want it. If you are just trying to make money and want the book to look better, it probably is a good way to go. And if it's your own book, who cares? You do you, you, do you on your own book. I, I don't like to do it. I do experiments on it. And sometimes I have to use it in a very special case where I'm trying to get something off that's really bad. But what I do is I will put Ki tablets. So I buy potassium iodide and I mix it in water. And if I put some peroxide on, 
I'll put peroxide and just within a few seconds I will put I will neutralize any excess peroxide with um, some suspended potassium iodide and that will neutralize it I won't give you the whole reaction you probably bore you to death anyway but um, that's what that's what's going on there um, I am running out of time today I appreciate your patience with me and hardly ever posting videos anymore and I'll get back to I'll show you I'm gonna clean some cool books soon if I ever get back to Seattle and I'm going to do some more work on foxing and show you the damage of light on paper and stuff. I'm just literally like almost never home. I think I've been home 30 hours in the last month just to see my son's birthday. So uh, I'm trying hard, but I'm just overly occupied right now. Uh, when does this quarantine stuff start anyway? <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, I'll post some videos. Some kind customers have been showing me some results from their cleaning. Uh, some good, some bad. So I'm I'm not gonna hide anything. I'll show you I'll show you all of it, and um, I will see you around online. Keep keep the questions and the comments coming because I love it. And I this is this is my avenue into this hobby now that I'm pretty much done getting new comic books. I just like to fix old ones. It's it's what I love to do. Uh, I think about books way too much. So uh, anyway, take care, you guys. Uh, um, see you around. Bye bye.